Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's Grade 6, Unit 3, Lesson 4, Practice Problems Review. Priya's family exchanged $250 for 4,250 pesos. Priya bought a sweater for 510 pesos. How many dollars did the sweater cost? Well, certainly one way to solve this question is to use the table. And we have our dollars broken down here on the right side and the pesos going from 4,250 with a bunch of blanks to 510. So we can ask ourselves, how do we get from 250 to 25? Well, let's divide by 10. And so I can take 4,250 and, well, divide by 10 to get 425 pesos for the $25. Next, how do we get from 25 to 1? Well, this time we're dividing by 25. Four hundred twenty five divided by twenty five is seventeen. And now we can go from one to three. Here we'll multiply by three. Seventeen times three, twenty one, and we get fifty one. So fifty one pesos for three dollars. And our last step then, how do we get from fifty one to five hundred ten? Well, we multiply by 10, and 3 times 10 is 30. Let's continue on. Question 2. There are 3,785 milliliters in one gallon. There are 4 quarts in one gallon. For each question, explain or show your reasoning. How many milliliters are there in 3 gallons? Well, there's 3,785 milliliters in one gallon. And if we want to find out how many milliliters are in three gallons, we can ask ourselves, well, one to three, we're multiplying by three. And so to make this equal, We'll then multiply the 3,785 by 3 and get a solution of 11,355 milliliters for the 3 gallons. Now, how many milliliters are in 1 quart? Let's start off with our first fact here. That there are 3,785 milliliters in one gallon. Now we're trying to get to milliliters in one quart. And so if I set up another fraction to multiply here, We're going to be keeping the milliliters, but canceling out the gallons and converting that to quarts. So that means my gallons is going to need to go on top and my quarts is going to need on the bottom. That way, my gallons unit is going to cancel out. Now, what am I putting in? The fact that one gallon is four quarts. And so, I'll end up having 3,000. 785 milliliters and 1 times 4 on the bottom is 4 quarts. Again, 3,785 times 1 was 3,785 milliliters and 1 times 4 was the 4 quarts. And this process of setting up this rate here is called dimensional analysis. Now to finish the question, we do need to take 3,785 and divide it by 4 to get a solution of 946 and 25 hundredths milliliters in that one quart. And then I took, got that by dividing by four. Question three. Lynn knows that there are four quarts in a gallon. She wants to convert six quarts to gallons, but cannot decide if she 
should multiply 6 by 4 divide by 6, or divide 6 by 4 to find our answer. What should she do? If you get stuck, consider drawing a double number line or using a table. Well, if you want to use the table method, we could set up quarts and gallons. We know there's four quarts and one gallon, and she's trying to get to six quarts. And how many gallons? She wants to convert six quarts to gallons, but cannot decide if she should multiply six by four or divide six by four to find her answer. Well, we're asking ourselves, four times what is six? In our table here. Well, that answer is going to be the same thing as what six divided by four is. I mean, six divided by four is one and a half. And so four times one and a half is going to equal six, and so one times one and a half is the one and a half. So in all of that, what did we end up doing? We divided six by four to get that one and a half. So we can multiply the one times one and a half to get one and a half. <laughs> so what should she have done? Divide 6 by 4. Continuing on. Tyler has a baseball bat that weighs 28 ounces. Find this weight in kilograms and in grams and note that 1 kilogram is 35 ounces. Well, 28 ounces. I'm going to set this up over 1. We're going to multiply this by something in order to get our weight into kilograms. Now, to do this, we know our ounces is going to have to cancel out. So our ounces can go on the bottom, and our kilograms can go on top. And we know that one kilogram is equal to 35 ounces. Now I can multiply these numbers across. 28 ounces times one kilogram is 28 kilograms. 1 times 35 is 35, and the ounces actually ended up canceling out here as a unit. And so if I took 28 and divided by 35, I would get 8 tenths of a kilogram for those 28 ounces. Also know that 1,000 grams equals 1 kilogram, and so 8 tenths of a kilogram is going to equal 800 grams. And again, if you took 8 tenths times 1,000, you get the 800 grams. Our next question, question 5. Identify whether each unit measures length, volume, or weight slash mass. All right, mile, that's a length. Centimeter is another length. Yard is a length. And those are our lengths. Cup is a volume. Liter is a volume. Pint is a volume, teaspoon is a volume, and milliliter is a volume. Pound is a weight or mass, gram is a weight or mass, and kilogram is a weight or mass. And finally, question six, a recipe for trail mix uses 7 ounces of almonds with 5 ounces of raisins. Almonds and raisins are the only ingredients. How many ounces of almonds would be in a 1 pound bag of this trail mix? Explain or show your reasoning. Well, if we have almonds, and we have raisins, and we look at our total. 
7 ounces of almond, 5 ounces of raisins, add up to be 12 ounces total. Now, how many ounces of almonds would be in a one pound bag of this trail mix? There are 16 ounces in a pound. If we look at how do I get from 12 to 16? Well, if I multiply by whatever 16 over 12 is, that simplifies to 4 thirds. 12 times 4 thirds is 16. So if I take 7 and multiply it by 4 thirds, I get 28 thirds, which is equivalent to 9 and 1 third ounces of almonds. Now, didn't ask for raisins, but if you were to multiply that by 4 thirds, you would actually get 20 thirds, which is 6 and 2 thirds, and when you add 6 and 2 thirds with the 9 and 1 third, you do end up with 16 ounces total. And I know I said finally with 6, but now finally on 7. An ant can travel at a constant speed of 980 inches every 5 minutes. How far does the ant travel in 1 minute? Well, 980 inches in 5 minutes. Getting that to be 1 minute, we can divide by 5. And so 980 divided by 5 is 196 inches in that minute. Now, 7 minutes, if I have 196 inches in 1 minute, and I'm trying to get to 7 minutes, well, multiply by 7. And 196 times 7 is 1,372 inches in those seven minutes. That is it for this grade six, unit three, lesson four, practice problems review. Good luck.